Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve permutations to the follow up to the first permutations problem. So we're given again a list of numbers and the only difference with this problem compared to the permutations one is that this one actually might contain duplicate values, but we want to do the exact same thing. We just want to return all unique permutations in any particular order. So you look at this first example, right? We have duplicates. We have two two ones. And if you don't remember, a permutation is that, okay, so we have three numbers. That means we have three spots for each of, so for the first spot, we have three choices, right? We can choose any of these three numbers. And if we choose one of the numbers, then we'll have two remaining. So for the next spot, we can choose two numbers. And if we do that in the last spot, we'll only have one choice. So we know that we have three times two times one permutations, which is the same as n factorial, where n is the size of the input. But this is for a regular permutation, right? When you look at this, we don't have six permutations. We have three. And the reason is because the we have duplicate values in our input, right? So since this itself is one permutation, right? The list itself is a permutation of itself. One way we could get a different permutation is swapping the first two values, right? But if we reverse the order of them, we still get the same exact permutation, one, one, two. And that does not count as a new permutation. It's a duplicate, it's the same as this one. So we don't want duplicates. I'm gonna show you how to solve this problem with the difficulty that comes with it not having duplicates in our output. So we're gonna solve this problem with backtracking just like the first one. And so this is going to be our input. So let me just show you why a normal decision tree uh, with, with this is not going to work. So we know f we have three spots, right, in our permutation. So let's say for the first spot, we choose the first element, right, one. So that's one choice. For our second choice, we can choose this as the first element, right, one, but we see that they're the exact same, right? This is what's gonna cause our duplicates, but let me just show you why. The third spot will have a two, so now for this one, we have two more choices, right? We chose the first one, but now we can choose either of these. So for our second spot, we have two choices. So we can do a one or we can do a two. And if we did two ones, we know for our third choice, we can only do a two. If we did one, two, we know for our third choice, we have a remaining one. And now let's do the same for this one. So we chose the middle one, so we have two choices, one and two. Notice how we're getting the exact same result in both spots, right? So with this, we'll have a remaining choice of two. For this, we'll have a remaining choice of one. So along this branch, we had two different permutations, one, one, two, and one, two, one, right? That's our second permutation. And for this one, we had the exact same thing. We got both permutations duplicated, right? That's not what we wanna do. And that happened because we started with the exact same value. We cannot use duplicates in the same position if we wanna end up with different permutations. So this is a problem. Like this solution just does not work currently. We have duplicates, we don't want duplicates. And so with the two actually, we'll also have duplicates, right? If we choose a two, then we have two choices, right? We can choose either of the ones. And then if we choose a one, we'll only have one value remaining, a one for each of these paths. So now you see even these are duplicates, right? And that happened because for these positions, we chose the exact same value. So we can solve this problem. And the way we're gonna do it is instead of using this array as our input, we're gonna modify this array into a hash map. And let me show you what this hash map is going to look like. So this is our hash map. So we do not need this input array anymore. You can see we took each number. So we had a one in our original uh, array, right? And how many ones did we have? Well, we're gonna count that and we ended up with two. And we also had a two value in our input. How many did we have? What's the count of that two? Well, we only had one. So with basically with this list, we eliminated the duplicates, right? We only have two numbers but we didn't get rid of it completely because we counted how many of each we had. So now with this map, I'm going to do the decision tree, the backtracking decision tree. So we actually have two choices now because look at the numbers that we have in our 
um, hash map, we have a one and a two. So we have two choices for the first value, a one or a two. So again, we're still doing the same thing. We're looking for permutations of length three, right? And for our first spot, we're choosing either a one or a two. So let's go with this path. So we chose a one for our first value. So now how many choices do we have? Do we, can we only choose two in this case? Well, yes, we have two, of course, right? But since we only used one of our ones, right? So initially the count was two, but now we used one. So now there's only one left. So we're gonna have to update our hash map as we go along this decision tree. So we have one left. So now let's use that one, right? So if we use that one, then we'll have zero ones left, right? So zero ones along this path. And, in, and lastly, we'll only be able to choose a two, which will leave us with zero twos, right? So, so basically this is one of our permutations, one, one, two. And you can see that this permutation is never going to be repeated because we cannot make that permutation again over here. We chose a two instead of a one. And that permutation is never going to be repeated here because this one starts with a two. It does not start with a one. So now let's finish up this decision tree because we know we cannot add any more to this. It's length three. So the, these counts are getting kind of sloppy, but I don't think I pretty much have used them to illustrate what I wanted to. So lastly, we know that there's only a one left over here. So this is also going to be a permutation. So, so far we have two permutations in our left subtree. Now let's finish up the right side. So since we started with a two over here, that means we ran out of twos, right? We have zero twos left. But in reality, we have two ones left, right? Because we only used a two, we have two ones left. Does that mean we have two choices? Can we choose one on each side? No, because look at the unique numbers we have. This is our only number left. We've used up this one, so we have one choice in reality. So we can choose a single one. And then the one count is going to be left as one. So we have one, one remaining. So we do have a choice left, but it's only a single choice and it's going to be a one. Let me just make these green. So now you can see that we ended up with three different permutations. And basically we eliminated the eliminated the duplicates by transforming our input array into a count hash map. Okay, so now let's get into the code. So we are going to have a result which is going to store the list of permutations, right, the output. And we're also going to have a list to store each permutation itself. So we only have one variable to do this. And lastly, let's make our count, our count hash map. So I'm going to take each number and initially map it to zero. So for every number in our nums input, I'm initially gonna map it to zero. So the count is initially gonna be zero. Then I'm going to go through every number and update the count of our map. So for every number, we're going to increment its count by one. So with this, we'll have a count hash map mapping every number in the input nums to its count. And then all we have to do is create our depth first search uh, backtracking, uh, our depth first search backtracking function. And I actually don't even need to pass any input values into it because all of these values are going to be accessible inside of here uh, because this function is nested inside of another function. So in this case, for this function, our base case is going to be that our permutation that we have, the length of that permutation is equal to the length of our input nums. That means the permutation is a complete, right? We have no more values left to choose to add to the permutation. And once that's the case, to our result, we're going to append a copy of the perm uh, list. And the reason we're making a copy is because we only have one of these uh, variables. Every time we make a change to it, we're gonna end up updating the variable. And since this is our base case, after that we can return. So next, uh, we're gonna brute force this, right? We're gonna, we're gonna choose every choice that we can. And what that means is we can go through every number in count, right? Count has eliminated the duplicates. Every key in our count hash map is going to be unique. 
And for this value, uh, we just want to make sure that the count is greater than zero. That means we're allowed to choose this for a permutation. We have enough values left. And we're going to take this value and add it to our current permutation. And if we add it to our current permutation, we have to take the count of it and decrement it by one, right? Because we're now going to recursively call depth first search again. And once that depth first search is completed, it will probably have, you know, gotten to its base case and ended up returning. After that, we can then clean up, meaning we can take the count of the value and add it and add one to it, right? And also then take our permutation and pop from the ending. So basically remove the value that we just ended up adding. And so this is going to ensure that we do not have duplicates and we also end up getting every single permutation, which is why we're going through every single number in our count hash map. And lastly, since our depth first search function is complete, we only have to call it and then we know our result will have the correct value so we can then return our result. And as you can see, this is about as efficient as you can get for this problem, even though this is super brute force. I don't even know what the time complexity is. It's at least, I think, O of N times two to the power of N uh, because two to the power of N is, it might even be N factorial. I just know that every time we make a copy, we're doing this N part you know, there's at most n factorial different per our permutations for a list of size n. But I hope this was helpful. I hope you understand a little bit more of what's going on in this problem. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.